Hi and welcome to the fifth video in the PowerShell 7.2 for Beginners tutorial series. In the last few videos, we learned the basics of PowerShell. We've learned how to store variables. We've also learned some different data structures like arrays and custom, ta uh, custom objects and hash tables. Today, we're going to be taking a look at another big part of PowerShell fundamentals, really. Uh, it's going to be the pipeline. Now, it kind of does exactly what the name uh, seems. So we're going to be able to take results from either we're going to be able to take a variable or we're going to be able to take results from a commandlet and use the pipeline to pass the data from that commandlet or that variable into another commandlet. And we can actually keep piping that through multiple commandlets in order to get everything on one line. And it'll just constantly pass that data forward. So we don't have to store everything into variables and then take up another line and then doing um, a loop process to loop through all the data. The pipeline will do that for us. So let's actually go ahead and let's take a look at that today. Now for today's video, because we're going to be using the get service, uh, start service and stop service as an example, we do actually have to run our, our Visual Studio code as administrator. Now this is also like a very good practice to just always run it as administrator if you can. Uh, it just lets you uh, do administrative tasks, which with PowerShell, it's probably what you're doing. Um, but you could definitely always run it as a regular user. If you encounter some issues, you can run it as administrator is probably going to be the problem. Uh, so what we're going to want to do is we're just going to want to go ahead and um, open up our little menu here and then find the Visual Studio code on your computer and right click on it and hit run as administrator. And this should pop up. And then at the top here, you should see administrator in square brackets. That means that everything is working correctly and you are running as administrator. So let's actually go ahead and let's get started by using the get service commandlet. Now we've seen this commandlet already in the first video. We know that it just gets all these services currently on the computer, whether they are running or stopped. So there's the list of services running on my computer currently. Uh, so that seems to be working perfectly fine. Now we can actually also specify a specific service to pull back. So if we do get service dash name spooler, we can actually get the specific service from spooler which is the print spooler. And right now we can actually see that it is actually stopped on my computer. Now, if you are trying to get the service of spooler, maybe multiple times throughout your script, what would actually be better in case Windows ever decides to change that uh, service name, which is probably unlikely, um, but this would go also for other uh, code examples. If you're ever using something really more than once in your code, you should be storing it as a variable. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to create a variable called service name, and we're going to store that as spooler. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change this to the service name variable. And if we run this here, we'll see if we get the exact same output, but now we are using a variable as our name for the get service. So we can actually call multiple things now just using the service name and we're always referencing the spooler item. All right, so now that it is actually stopped, let's go ahead and let's start the service, make sure that we can actually start it. So if we do a start dash service here and we do a dash name and we're just gonna pass in once again that service name here. All right, and let's just get the service now. So now we do actually see that it is running. So we've done a get service, we've done a start service, and we know that we also have a stop service. But now let's actually go and really the main reason of this video is that pipeline. We want to see how we can use the pipeline to make this a little bit more efficient. So what we can actually do to stop a service. So let's go ahead and let's just do a get help here. 
and let's do a stop service and let's do a dash full and we're going to go ahead and we're going to run this here and we're going to go ahead and look at what it looks like all right so here we have the stop service and we have the syntax now we're going to see the first syntax um, way here uh, which is the stop service input object service controller um, so let's go look to see what kind of parameter input object service controller is so if we actually go ahead and look at the parameters here if we scroll down we see that we have input object and it is a service controller and it seems to take a array of service controllers and it seems here that accept pipeline input is true and it is by value so we can actually the stop service accepts our pipeline input we will also see that the name will also accept pipeline input by value and also by property name uh, so we're going to see what that means in just a little bit as well uh, but let's first look at to seeing what we actually get back from our get service since we know that the stop service takes in uh, a value and it's a service controller so if we do our get service here we're just going to copy paste that down here we're going to wrap that in parentheses and we're going to do a get type and we're going to run this here we get that it is a type service controller which is perfect like that's what we were kind of hoping for so let's go ahead and let's just remove this get type, remove the brackets here. So once we have the get service name service name, what we can do is we can do a pipe. The vertical line is the pipeline. And then what we could do is we could just do a stop service. And let's go ahead and let's run this here. And let's go see what the service is. So the service is actually stopped. So what this did is it got the service for spooler and then what it did is it returns back a service controller object which then gets passed through the pipe into stop service and then stop service will actually execute that so it just takes the output from get service runs it through the pipe and runs the stop service command line on every entry now we can actually see this in a different way um, so if we actually go ahead, so we remember what the stop service looked like. So let's go ahead, let's put this back. Let's do a get help on get service. And let's do full here. So the get help is a very, very handy tool. Kind of like I mentioned in the first video, you're always going to want to remember that get help. Get help is one of those commandlets that you're going to want to remember. Because uh, it'll really help you out in the future um, when you might be stuck somewhere. So here we have get service. We see that it takes in a name. Uh, so if we just go ahead and look at name here, we see that it also accepts a pipeline input by value and by property name. And it takes in a string value or an array of strings. So let's go ahead and let's take a look here. At what we can actually do so what we could do is we can also do a service name and we could pipe that to get service so if we actually run this here just shrink this down so there we have it we actually get our service just the spooler service and then we could actually also then pipe it to start service and now if we actually just go ahead and we just get the service here it is now running so we actually use the pipe two times so here we just started with the variable which is equal to spooler we pass that variable to get service it takes it in as a value and it will instantly get used as a name so it's going to be doing get service uh, for the name of service name and it gets that service and then it grabs that service controller object and then passes that into start service now we could have just passed service name directly to start service 
Uh, but this is really just to show you how we could use it multiple times. And we could just keep piping um, forward. So let's actually go ahead and let's take a look at another example. But this time, let's actually do multiple services. So let's create an array. Um, and using our best practice that we've learned a little bit earlier, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new object of type of type name, and we're going to create a array list here. And then what we're going to do, uh, we're actually just going to make this uh, plural services and we're going to do services dot add and we're going to add a range and we're going to add just simply an array of services here so let's let's go ahead and let's add some services so we're going to add the spooler service and we're going to add the w32 time service so there's our two services that we have and then what we're going to do is we're going to do services and we're going to pipe that to get service so let's see what this actually does. So there's our services. We have our services. And once we pipe that to get service, we can actually see that we actually get both services back. And now they're both running. So if we actually do, again, just to show you guys the different steps that I'm taking. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a stop service on both. So if we run this here, and now let's get the service for both. They are both stopped. And if I start them back up again here, and we go ahead and we look at it, they are both running again. So the pipeline is very, very handy. You could do a lot of powerful things with it. We're going to see later on when we get into some more complicated scripts, uh, the pipe really gets very, very handy, um, especially with different loops. Um, instead of calling a for each loop, you can also just basically do a pipe and that will work just as well. And just to kind of give you guys a little sneak peek at that, let's actually go ahead and let's do that here. So let's do the services and we're going to pipe that to get service. Now let's say we wanted to give to the user something a little bit more readable than this. Maybe our user doesn't understand what this necessarily means. We would actually be able to pipe this to a for each object here and then do some curly brackets. And then we could do like a right output. And then in here, you don't necessarily have to worry about what I'm doing here. Uh, this is just kind of like a sneak peek of what we'll be kind of seeing a little bit later on. Because um, in the next couple videos, we're going to be looking at more uh, programming style. Uh, we're going to be looking at conditional statements. We're going to be looking at loops. Uh, so this will be something that you will be seeing quite a bit of in the near future. But mostly what I wanted to cover was how to reference something coming from a pipe. So if you're ever referencing something coming from a pipe with a variable, the variable is actually the dollar sign underscore. So we're going to do a dollar sign underscore and we want to reference the uh, let's reference the display name since that is a little bit more user friendly. Uh, display name. And let's actually do uh, so service colon. We're going to show the display name of the service is currently. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to display the data here. All right. So we have that. So basically what this does is we're going to take our services array. We are going to pipe that to get service. So we're going to get the service for each of our services. And then what we're going to do is for each of those objects that come through, we're actually going to write to the screen. We're going to write a service and we're going to show the display name. So this dollar sign parentheses um, is because we have a dot notation here. We do need to wrap the variable in like a variable wrapper, which is the dollar sign parentheses. Uh, then we're going to pick the display name, which is coming from here. And then we're going to say is currently. And once again, we're wrapping our variable and we're going to be showing the status. So let's go ahead and let's run this line of code here. So here we have it. Service print spooler is currently running. 
service Windows Time is currently running. So it looks a little bit different, um, but again, we just used the pipe. We never stored something to a variable other than our original two services. All we did was use the pipe to kind of just transfer that data over without having to store it in a variable. Now there might be times where storing into a variable is actually a better idea than using the pipeline. Um, people do end up writing some very, very complicated one-liners with pipelines. Always keep in mind readability um, as well. If someone comes into your code and it becomes hard to read because there's 10 or 20 pipes going forward, it might actually be a smarter idea to maybe separate some of those out with variables and kind of break it up into chunks. Uh, but again, it really depends on if you ever plan on someone else reading your code but also if you ever go back to read your code, make sure that you would be able to understand it, maybe comment it at that point. Um, but that is really the pipeline you're gonna see in PowerShell, the pipeline is greatly, greatly used. Um, so hopefully this video kind of clears up the pipeline for you guys. Um, if you guys have any comments or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. In the next couple of videos, we're gonna be looking at conditional statements, uh, some loops, and then we're going to eventually get into some more intermediate topics uh, like PowerShell remoting and some of that fun stuff. Again, uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and also be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.